I got interested in close community providers when I was working on home-based HIV counselling and testing, observing door-to-door -door programmes and interviewing the counsellors, interviewing people who'd had tests from door-to-door -door counsellors and working with the project managers and programmers who were doing it. And as part of that work, we went and watched counsellors in their homes actually doing the counselling and testing. And you could see immediately what issues were in the household and what the multiple things that community health workers face and how they have a unique opportunity because they really can understand what's happening in a household much better than it could ever be in a sort of clinical environment or a facility where people have scrubbed up, present with a problem and talk to you, stand in a queue and then talk to you for a few minutes. You could be sitting there in the house and see instantly in this one room that everyone lives in, how many kids there are, how many other relatives live there, what the sleeping arrangements are, whether there's bed nets, whether alcohol's a problem in the house, how couples interact. And it gives you such insights into people's health. And community health workers have that unique opportunity. And so that excited me about community health workers. At the same time as I work with countries and ministries of health, I realised people are loading those same people, those close to community providers, with loads of tasks. They're the final common pathway of every vertical programme. So of course HIV testing counselling is one of those vertical programmes, but TB sputum collections, bed net distributions, immunisations could be other things, tasks that are loaded onto close to community providers. And how do they then balance all the different requirements of them and still provide a quality and effective service, how do they make the most of that opportunity that they see in the homes to promote good health or to link to treatment and care? They need, need to have support systems in place to do that with quality and often that is lacking. So they're juggling these multiple workloads but they don't have support and supervision and other systems in place. In terms of what a close to community provider is, it could be a community health worker, it could be a lay counsellor, it could be a person who is selling medications through informal systems in the community, it could be a village health committee member, there's a range of close to community providers and they have some training but they're not professionally trained individuals. They may be salaried or they may be volunteered and programmes that work with them have to take that into account because volunteers um, require training but also may leave after a certain time and salaried have different expectations and different needs. So Reach Out is working in six countries in Asia and Africa and each of them has different close to community providers and each of them has different health priorities for prevention and treatment of health problems. And, and because of that, each context is different. And so any knowledge that we generate has to take that into account. And what we're already seeing from our partners is that each context also has similarities. And Reach Out is looking at, at differences and similarities and trying to understand how those differences and similarities can be used, understood and used to make changes, improvements and interventions to help close to community services increase universal health coverage, increase equitable services, increase effectiveness and efficiency of services. Money is being poured in globally into this concept, redesigning strategies for community services, because it has the potential to increase health coverage and increase equity in healthcare. But at the same time, we really don't know whether it's going to work. And reach out will generate evidence on if it, if it is going to work, and if so, what can we do to help it work? What can we do to make it effective, efficient, and equitable. 
And how does that play out, not only from the perspective of the health system, but of the actual provider who might be a volunteer on a low salary or not have any promotional opportunities or a number of other things that influence the way they go about their daily jobs.